Now, more of Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Opportunity Project, the only show directly addressing the problems and solutions for Illinois. Now, from AM560, here's Dan Proft. Dan and Joe Kaiser back on this edition of Illinois Rising, and uh, Joe, veto session began this week. Uh, All kinds of... uh, Noblemen and magistrates populating Springfield, just less with ours next to their names, like a lot less. Uh, looks like we're going to be uh, the 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 uh, net net is going to be minus seven in the House, down to forty four of one hundred eighteen in the House Republicans, and down to nineteen of fifty nine in the Senate. <laughs> yeah. uh, the response has been. The response was uh, more of the same. The Mott's party, uh, both parties, more of the same. Uh, Durkin and Brady reelected without opposition to be uh, their caucus leaders. Uh, Tim Schneider stay as state party chairman, presumably. And we'll just uh, continue on. Uh, Democrats now uh, in their most powerful position, most number of Democrats in the uh, state legislature since Illinois was incorporated since uh, before the Republican Party existed, when it was Democrats contending with Whigs, <laughs> uh, combined with the statewide offices, of course, and uh, the uh, potentates who live within about five square miles of one another in Chicago, controlling and running the entire state. Very rare uh, statewide, or uh, excuse me, nationwide. Uh, Illinois is one of five states, along with Rhode Island, Hawaii, California, and New Jersey, where Democrats control all statewide offices as well as holding supermajorities in both houses of the legislature. I mean, Rhode Island, Hawaii are like city states. So California, New Jersey, and Illinois, the worst governed states in the country. And it's amazing given Mike Madigan's unpopularity and Democrats' track record in the state that voters would want to give them more power and the most power they've had in the history of the state. But it really speaks more to the fact, I mean, people can't just vote people out. They have to vote somebody in. And it really speaks to the alternative message that Republicans have or haven't been, I guess, offering over the years. Because people, when they go to the ballot box, they're not just going to vote out of anger. I don't like Mike Madigan. They're going to have to want to vote for an alternative. And they might not, you know, see the alternative. There's a good piece in the Washington Examiner about California Republicans and the Republican Party there. A convenient narrative has formed. California Republicans are a casualty of President Trump. Yet the party's problems have been around longer and run much deeper than any one person from money to grassroots organization, California Republicans are completely outmatched. And uh, if you wanted to apply that to Illinois Republicans, which you absolutely could, you would add and complicit with Chicago Democrats, which is the Mott's party, more of the same. And so that's what we'll get. And it's been interesting. Uh, the, uh, you know, Jim Durkin in the House, uh, he uh, had sort of a close race, even though there was no money spent on it. I mean, one by 12 points, that's nothing in a state legislative race. You can make those leads disappear very quickly as uh, some of our Republican state legislators in ostensibly safe Republican districts found out. Tom Morris and Mark Batnick, I mean, they won 15, 20 points last cycle, and they're you know hanging on by uh, a handful of votes now. But uh, Durkin... Is, likes to tell people that Madigan didn't go after him in the suburbs where he could have because he respects him. Um, and uh, the fact is that Madigan didn't go after Durkin because he wants Durkin to be the minority leader. Right. Excuse me, super minority leader. If you can pick your opposition, that's all the better. I mean, this is why Trump selects Jim Acosta to ask a question at a press conference. He wants Jim Acosta to ask the question because he wants to use Jim Acosta to his ends. And so not only is Mike Madigan uh, selecting the leadership of the Democrat Party, he's de facto selecting the leadership of the Republican Party with Republican complicity in that selection. And so why would anything change? Right. I mean, the the New England Patriots would love to play the Cleveland Browns every week if they could. I mean, and it, select it, their quarterback. It, it, yeah, right. Yeah. And and why why is bragging about respect from Mike Madigan even something you would want to boast? Yes, he, why, he, he obviously sees you as a, a real worthy adversary. Forty four seats, you knucklehead. I mean, it's it's so laughable. But this is the pathetic contortions Republicans are undergoing to try and rationalize their own incompetence 
and cowardice and super minority status. And, and the status right now of Republicans is, is all up in the air. And you see it even in veto session right now. The first day of veto session, Governor Rauner had 39 bills overridden. He, he has, I mean, he's on his way out, but he has no, no friends in that chamber right now. And then he's going to be gone. His money's going to be gone from the party. It's just in complete disarray. And, and there's no clear path forward unless, you know, this, this, the path they're on right now is the one that continue, but it's not a successful one. Fell in love with the checkbook. And uh, the Pied Piper let, led Republicans down the primrose path to oblivion. I mean, the, the conversations that are happening, uh, some of the other states are at least semi-honest. In, in, in point of fact, next door, Indiana Democrats on the brink of extinction as well. They're actually having a legitimate conversation about what do we do and how do we retool and re-engineer and reintroduce and represent ourselves. Because you've got Indiana, they've, they're the opposite. They're the, the 180 degrees. Nine of 11 members of their congressional delegation, both U.S. senators now with bronze victory. Obviously, all the constitutional officers in Indiana, majorities in the state legislature. That's Indiana. And we're the opposite. Soul searching going on among Indiana Democrats. Steady as she goes going on with Illinois Republicans. Hmm. You wonder why Indiana is so attractive to so many Illinois Republicans.